Other actions as well of Israel have been scrutinized from within. And human rights requires that you go after the worst first. You look at what's happening in the Sudan. You look at what's happening in Rwanda. You look at what happened in Cambodia. But the world changed the subject. While it investigated Israel, hundreds of thousands of people died in Darfur and in the Sudan. I'm writing a book called The Second Six Million, in which I will prove that since the Holocaust, since never again, since the Shoah, six million additional people have been subjected to genocide because the world has focused obsessively only on Israel. We want to hear about Rwanda? No. The UN won't look at Rwanda. We won't look at 100,000 or 200,000 or 300,000 being killed. No. We want to look at why a particular terrorist may have been killed and one or two civilians who were human shields may have been killed with them. That's more important than trying to stop hundreds of thousands of deaths. Only in the Orwellian world of the Human Rights Council and in the Orwellian world of the United Nations. We who truly believe in human rights understand that the worst has to come first and the worst who are doing the worst things. And there are no remedies from within. There are no opportunities. There's no dissent. There's no judicial system. In Israel, it's very easy. You don't like what the Israeli government's doing? Call the Arts. They'll write a front page story about it. You don't like what Israel's doing? Go to the Supreme Court. They'll render a decision. You don't like what Israel's doing? Vote them out. Get new people in office. You can't do that in Iran. You can't do that in the Sudan. You can't do that in most other parts of the world where human rights violations occur. So why fritter away the resources of human rights on investigating ad nauseum, a country which is the very best and has the best forms of relief? Why? Why did our friend, a decent man, Richard Goldstone, accept the role as token Jew to investigate Israel and only Israel. Oh, he's going to investigate the Gaza and Hamas too. And sure, Richard Goldstone in the UN, we know the end result. It's going to be even-handedness. Even-handedness. Diplomatic speak. Yes, Hamas is bad and Israel is just as bad. Yes, it's just as wrong to fire rockets at civilians as it is to fire rockets at those who are firing the rockets. There will be no real analysis of human shields, no real analysis of the quadruple war crime that Hamas commits every time it sends a, record, a rocket. It sends a rocket to kill civilians. They're anti-personnel bombs. They're sent during school hours. It's sent from behind human shields. It's sent for purposes of destroying a nation state of the United Nations. And it's sent in violation of Charter Article 51 and enabling self-defense. Four war crimes with one rocket. And Israel responds completely proportionally. What does proportionality mean? Proportionality means you don't do anything more than that which is necessary to stop the rockets. Israel acted underproportionately in, in the Gaza. It didn't stop the rockets. It simply slowed them down. It could have stopped the rockets. It had every right to enter Gaza City. But it chose, for prudential and moral reasons, no, to declare partial victory in order to save as many human lives, civilian lives, as possible. So the case for Israel is a case that's easily made if you're just willing to listen. The case against Israel's enemies is also an easy case if you're just willing to listen. You know, people say, we're progressives and we support Israel. That's, oh, I'm sorry, they say, we're progressives and we support Israel's enemies. That's not a progressive cause. Ahmadinejad is the direct, literal heir of Adolf Hitler through the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, with whom Hitler spent the war years. You can trace directly the Hamas charter to the Nuremberg rallies. They virtually copy each other. It's not a progressive cause to support Hamas. It's not a progressive cause to oppose the one government in Israel that favors all the progressive issues of the day, ranging from women to gays to environment. That's not a progressive cause to oppose them in the name of people who oppress women and execute homosexuals. Where are the liberals? Where are the progressives? Where are the people who claim to be speaking in the name of decency? Why are they choosing the enemies of decency over those who support decency? And my students ask me sometimes, can the whole world be wrong? And the answer is yes. When it comes to Jews, the whole world has been wrong before. They were wrong when they said we murdered Christian children. 
to drink their blood for Passover. Everybody believed that. Everybody believed that. People in Syria and Lebanon and people who watch uh, television coming from the Middle East still believe that. Of course it's wrong. Yes, the whole world can be wrong. And our job is to make sure that the world at least listens, hears, understands, knows what their conclusions must be, knows what side justice must be on. So we have a job to do. It's going to be a very difficult job. The case can be made. People will hear, but will they listen? Will they listen? And that's your job. And I want to spend the last 30 seconds of my talk talking about the young people and the future. You have a much harder job than we had. When we were growing up, everybody loved Israel. Six-day war, wow, we beat our chests. I'm Jewish. I support Israel. Everybody liked you. You know, you supported Israel. People wanted to go out with you, date you. I recently had a student at Harvard who came to me and said, I need, to give, I need you to give me tshuva during the Aseret Yimei Tshuva, the 10 days of repentance, because I never speak up on behalf of Israel. I say, why not? He said, I won't get dates if I speak up on behalf of Israel. So I started a campaign at Harvard, you know, support Israel, date a Zionist tonight. It worked. It was nice. But the point was that it was not cool. It was not cool. In my generation, it was easy. Your generation is much harder. Your generation, speaking up in support of Israel, sometimes will result in losing friends. Sometimes will result in become, becoming more unpopular. I don't envy you the difficulty of your position, but there is right and wrong in this world, and there is a morally correct thing to do. You know, we can't blame our grandparents. They didn't stand up during the 1930s. They were voiceless. Canada. For example, their famous interior minister's statement, even one is too many, talking about Jews coming into Canada. In, on the floor of the United States Senate, Senator Bilbo talking about keeping the kikes out. And somebody said, we're only talking about little children, five or six-year-old little children, they're cute little children. And he said on the floor of the Senate, sure, they're cute little kids today, and in 15, 20 years, they'll be kikes. Keep them out. We had no power. We had no power back in the 1930s. Mearsheimer and Walt are right about one thing. We do have influence. We are listened to. We use the democratic processes. We use our hard-earned money. We have lived the American dream, the Canadian dream, the European dream. We've contributed more to our societies proportionately than anyone else. And we have the right, as participants in democracies, to participate effectively. Of course there's an Israel lobby. Thank God for it. I wish it was stronger and more powerful. Lobbies are very important in the United States. That's the way business gets done. There's an NAACP lobby, an ACLU lobby, a lobby for old people, a lobby for gays. All of these are good causes. They need lobbies. We need you, the young people, to be our lobby with the young people. We need you to develop new technologies. We're accused of controlling the media. Let's at least learn how to use the media. Let's learn how to use it effectively. Let's start Facebook programs. Let's start groups. Let's use Twitter. I don't even know what these words mean, but use them. They're very important. I spoke at a news conference this morning. They gave me something. I thought it was a cigarette lighter. It turns out to be a memory chip. It's very important. You folks know what these things mean. Use them. Use them effectively. Make the case for Israel. 50 years from now, we want your children and grandchildren to look back, not the way we look back at our grandparents and our great-grandparents. We want your children to look back and say, they did it. They made a difference. They turned public opinion. They persuaded people to support justice, peace, and the state of Israel. Thank you all very much.